A dragon is a legendary creature, typically with serpentine or reptilian traits, that features in the myths of many cultures. There are two distinct cultural traditions of dragons. The European dragon, derived from European folk traditions and ultimately related to Greek and Middle Eastern mythologies, and the Chinese dragon, with counterparts in Japan, Korea and other East Asian countries. The two traditions may have evolved separately, but have influenced each other to a certain extent, particularly with the cross-cultural contact of recent centuries. The English word dragon derives from Greek delta rho alpha kappa omega nu, dragon, serpent of huge size, water snake. Name. The word dragon entered the English language in the early 13th century from Old French dragon, which in turn comes from Latin draconium meaning huge serpent, dragon, from the Greek word delta rho alpha kappa omega nu, dracon, serpent, giant seafish. The Greek and Latin term referred to any great serpent, not necessarily mythological, and this usage was also current in English up to the 18th century. Morphology A dragon is a mythological representation of a reptile. In antiquity, dragons were mostly envisaged as serpents, but since the Middle Ages, it has become common to depict them with legs, resembling a lizard. Dragons are usually shown in modern times with a body like a huge lizard, or a snake with two pairs of lizard-type legs, and able to emit fire from their mouths. The European dragon has bat-like wings growing from its back. A dragon-like creature with wings but only a single pair of legs is known as a wyvern. Comparative mythology the association of the serpent with a monstrous opponent overcome by a heroic deity has its roots in the mythology of the ancient Near East, including Canaanite, Hittite and Mesopotamian, Humbaba, the fire-breathing dragon-fanged beast first described in the Epic of Gilgamesh is sometimes described as a dragon with Gilgamesh playing the part of Dragon Slayer. The legless serpent motif entered Greek mythology and ultimately Christian mythology. Although the serpent motif may already be part of prehistoric Indo-European mythology as well, based on comparative evidence of Indic and Germanic material, although dragons occur in many legends around the world, different cultures have varying stories about monsters that have been grouped together under the dragon label. Some dragons are said to breathe fire or to be poisonous, such as in the Old English poem Beowulf, writes, Dragons emitting fire were traditional elements of folk tales and myths and, as such, later permeated into modern fantasy. They are present, for example, in Anne McCaffrey's Dragonflight and its sequels, they are commonly portrayed as serpentine or reptilian, hatching from eggs and possessing typically scaly or feathered bodies. They are sometimes portrayed as hoarding treasure. Some myths portray them with a row of dorsal spines. European dragons are more often winged, while Chinese dragons resemble large snakes. Dragons can have a variable number of legs. None, two, four, or more when it comes to early European literature. Dragons are often held to have major spiritual significance in various religions and cultures around the world. In many Asian cultures dragons were, and in some cultures still are, revered as representative of the primal forces of nature, religion and the universe. They are associated with wisdom, often said to be wiser than humans, and longevity. They are commonly said to possess some form of magic or other supernatural power, and are often associated with wells, rain, and rivers. In some cultures, they are also said to be capable of human speech. In some traditions, dragons are said to have taught humans to talk. Narratives about dragons often involve them being killed by a hero. This topos can be traced to the chaos camp of the mythology of the ancient Near East. The motif is continued in Greek Apollo, and the early Christian narratives about Michael the Archangel and Saint George. The slaying of Eartra by Indra in the Rigveda also belongs in this category. The theme survives into medieval legend and folklore, with dragon slayers such as Beowulf, Sigurd, Tristan, Margaret the Virgin, Heinrich von Winkelried, Dobrynya Nikitich, Skuba Dratuka, Krakus.
In the Bible, the archetype is alluded to in the descendants of Adam crushing the head of the serpent, and in Christian mythology, this was interpreted as corresponding to Christ as the last Adam crushing the devil. The blood of a slain dragon is depicted as either beneficent or as poisonous in medieval legend and literary fiction. In the Slavic myth, the earth refuses it as it is so vile that Mother Earth wishes not to have it within her womb, and it remains above ground for all eternity. The blood of the dragon in Beowulf has acidic qualities, allowing it to seep through iron. Heinrich von Winkelried dies after the blood of the dragon slain by him accidentally drips on him. Europe Greek mythology in ancient Greece The first mention of a dragon is derived from the Iliad where Agamemnon is described as having a blue dragon motif on his sword belt and an emblem of a three-headed dragon on his breastplate. However, the Greek word used could also mean snake. In 217 AD, Flavius Philostratus discussed dragons in India in the life of Apollonius of Tyana. The Loeb Classical Library translation mentions that, in most respects the tusks resemble the largest swines, but they are slighter in build and twisted, and have a point as unabraded as shark's teeth, according to a collection of books by Claudius Aelianus called On Animals. Ethiopia was inhabited by a species of dragon that hunted elephants. It could grow to a length of 180 feet and had a lifespan rivaling that of the most enduring of animals. European European dragons exist in folklore and mythology among the overlapping cultures of Europe. Dragons are generally depicted as living in rivers or having an underground lair or cave. They are commonly described as having hard or armored hide, and are rarely described as flying, despite often being depicted with wings. European dragons are usually depicted as malevolent under Christianity. Pre-Christian dragons, such as Y.D. Dragok, the Red Dragon of Wales, are seen as benevolent Slavic dragon in Slavic mythology. The words Zedme, Zmiy, or Zmaj are used to describe dragons. These words are masculine forms of the Slavic word for snake, which are normally feminine. In Romania, there is a similar figure, derived from the Slavic dragon and named Zmeu, exclusively in Polish and Belarusian folklore, as well as in the other Slavic folklores, a dragon is also called, or smok. In South Slavic folklores, the same thing is also called Lamia. Although quite similar to other European dragons, Slavic dragons have their peculiarities. Russian dragons usually have heads in multiples of three. Some have heads that grow back if every single head is not cut off. In Ukraine and Russia, a particular dragon-like creature, Zedme Goranik, has three heads and spits fire. According to one byliner, Zedme Goranik was killed by Bogata Dobrynya Nikitic. Other Russian dragons have Turkic names, probably symbolizing the Mongols and other nomadic steppe peoples. Accordingly, St. George killing the dragon is represented on the coat of arms of Moscow. Some prehistoric structures, notably the Serpent's Wall near Kiev, have been associated with dragons. Africa, South and West Asia, Ancient India in the early Vedic religion, Vrita or Vrtra, the enveloper, was a dragon or if Naga, or possibly dragon-like creature, the personification of drought and enemy of Indra. Vritra was also known in the Vedas as Ahi, and he is said to have had three heads. In later Puranic mythology he came to be identified with an Asura, the life of Apollonius of Tyana by Flavius Philostratus, contains a long detailed description of India heavily infested with dragons, but this does not correspond with modern Indian belief and likely not with Indian belief as it was in his time, whether Apollonius invented this story, or whether he believed someone else who told him it. Assam, India In Assam, dragon symbols are used in the Assamese culture. Generally, dragon's motifs are made for religious purposes. Such motifs are placed along the Mukut in Namgas. Dragons with lion body are placed on the top of the gates of these namgas, which symbolizes that they guard the gar. Dragon symbols are also used in clothes. 
Persian az i dahaka is the source of the modern Persian word ajdaha or ajdia meaning dragon. Often used of a dragon depicted upon a banner of war, the Persians believed that the baby of a dragon will be the same color as the mother's eyes. In Middle Persian he is called Dahag or Bevarasp, the latter meaning, he who has 10,000 horses, several other dragons and dragon-like creatures, all of them malevolent, are mentioned in Zoroastrian scripture, Jewish and Jewish religious texts. The first mention of a dragon-like creature is in the biblical works of Job and Isaiah where it is called Nashish Bariach, or a pole serpent. This is identified in the Midrash Rabbit of Genesis chapter 1 verse 21 as Leviathan from the word Taninim, and God created the great sea monsters. In modern Hebrew the word Taninim is used for crocodiles but this is a 20th century usage unconnected with the original biblical meaning. In later biblical texts, the book of Isaiah, the book of Job, and Psalm chapter 89 refer to a sea demon called Rahab. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 9 equates this Rahab with a dragon or monster. Rahab is the English transliteration of with the several meanings. Pride, a mythical sea monster, or Egypt. In the Douay Reims version, translated by a medieval Latin from the Vulgate, the word Reb is rendered the proud one in Isaiah chapter 51 verse 9 and Job chapter 26 verse 12 and the power of the sea in Psalm chapter 88 verse 10. The connection between the sea monster and Leviathan the serpent is made in Isaiah chapter 27 verse 1. In Jewish astronomy this is also identified with the North Pole, the star Thauban which, around 4,500 years ago, was the star in the Draco constellation's tail. However this can also have been either the celestial pole or the ecliptic pole. The ancient observers noted that Draco was at the top of the celestial pole, giving the appearance that stars were hanging from it and in Hebrew it is referred to as teli, from tala, to hang. Hebrew writers from Arabic-speaking locations identify the teli as al-jaha, which is a Persian word for a knot or a node, because of the intersection of the inclination of the orbit of a planet from the elliptic that forms two such nodes. In modern astronomy these are called the ascending node and the descending node. But in medieval astronomy they were referred to as dragon's head and dragon's tail. The Merthyr Synagogue features a dragon on the front gable. East Asia In East Asia, the concept of dragon appears largely in a form of a long, a beneficent dragon-like creature from Chinese folklore. Another dragon-like creature is a naga, which is prevalent in some Southeast Asian countries with more direct influence from Vedic religion. Chinese Dragon in China Depiction of the dragon can be found in artifacts from the Shang and Zhou dynasties with examples dating back to the 16th century BC. Archaeologist Zhou Chong F.A. believes that the Chinese word for dragon is an onomatopoeia of the sound of thunder. The Chinese name for dragon is pronounced long in Mandarin Chinese or Lunjin Cantonese. Sometime after the 9th century AD, Japan adopted the Chinese dragon through the spread of Buddhism. Although the indigenous name for a dragon in Japanese is Tatsu, a few of the Japanese words for dragon stem from the Chinese word for dragon, namely, Yuoryo. The Vietnamese word for dragon is Rong and the Korean word for dragon is Ryong. The Chinese dragon is the highest ranking animal in the Chinese animal hierarchy strongly associated at one time with the emperor and hence power and majesty, still recognized and revered. Its origins are vague, but its ancestors can be found on Neolithic pottery as well as Bronze Age ritual vessels. Tradition has it composed of nine different animals, with nine sons, each with its own imagery and affiliations. It is the only mythological animal of the 12 animals that represent the Chinese calendar. 2012 was the Chinese year of the water dragon. Japanese Japanese dragon myths amalgamate native legends with imported stories about dragons from China, Korea and India. Like these other Asian dragons, most Japanese ones are water deities associated with rainfall and bodies of water, and are typically depicted as large, wingless, serpentine creatures with clawed feet.
Gould writes, the Japanese dragoners invariably figured as possessing three claws. Vietnam Vietnamese dragons are symbolic creatures in the folklore and mythology of Vietnam. According to an ancient creation myth, the Vietnamese people are descended from a dragon and a fairy. To Vietnamese people, the dragon brings rain, essential for agriculture. It represents the emperor, the prosperity and power of the nation. Like the Chinese dragon, the Vietnamese dragon is the symbol of yang, representing the universe, life, existence, and growth. Extant references to the Vietnamese dragon are rare now, due to the fierce changes in history that accompanied the sinicization of the Nguyen dynasty. Korean Manipur Pakangba is a mythical hybrid dragon of Manipur which originated in an ancient deity of the Maithai people preceding Hinduism in the region. It was the traditional heraldic emblem of the princely state of Manipur. A Pakangba is a dragon with deer antlers. It usually has the body of a snake, but in some sculptures at the Kangla Palace in Imphal it is represented with a short body and four sturdy legs looking more like a lion. Bhutan the Druk, also known as Thunder Dragon, is one of the national symbols of Bhutan. In the Dzongkha language, Bhutan is known as Druk Yal, Land of Druk, and Bhutanese leaders are called Druk Yal Po, Thunder Dragon Kings. The Druk was adopted as an emblem by the Drukpa lineage, which originated in Tibet and later spread to Bhutan. Modern Depictions Sandra Martina Schwab writes, with a few exceptions, including McCaffrey's Pern novels and the 2002 film Reign of Fire, dragons seem to fit more into the medievalized setting of fantasy literature than into the more technological world of science fiction. Indeed, they have been called the emblem of fantasy. The hero's fight against the dragon emphasizes and celebrates his masculinity. Whereas revisionist fantasies of dragons and dragon slaying often undermine traditional gender roles. In children's literature, the friendly dragon becomes a powerful ally in battling the child's fears. In the early 20th century sculpture of the Norwegian artist Gustav Vujland, inspired by medieval art, dragons are a frequent theme, as symbols of sin but also as a natural force, fighting against man. Dragons and dragon motifs are featured in many works of modern literature, particularly within the fantasy genre. Prominent works depicting dragons include J.R.R. Tolkien's Silmarillion and The Hobbit, K. Rowling's Harry Potter novels, and McCaffrey's Dragon Riders of Pern, George R. R. Martin's series A Song of Ice and Fire, and Christopher Parolini's Tetralogy Inheritance Cycle. Even by the 18th century, critical thinkers like Diderot were asserting that too much literature had been published on dragons. There are already in books sold too many fabulous stories of dragons. The popular role-playing game system Dungeons and Dragons makes heavy use of dragons, and has served as inspiration for many other games' dragons. Though dragons usually serve as adversaries, they can be either good or evil, with their alignment being determined by their species. For example, a red dragon is evil and breathes fire while a silver dragon is good and breathes cold. Dragons have also been prevalent in other forms of media such as movies, TV shows, and video games. These forms of media have a large reach on the society making the modern depiction of the dragon more widespread in these movies and others that contain dragons. Dragons are major participants in the plot and character development. A few notable dragons in movies include Sophia from Aragon, Smaug from The Hobbit, Draco from Dragonheart, and King Ghidorah from the Godzilla franchise.